Molly May, will you come out to play? Your smile takes the edge off of the day. And you're a light that brightens This is Molly May, a bad pause pod and other nice stuff so with me, Molly May. You take me when you go. Yeah, hey there. I'm Molly May, and today it feels really fucking good to be excited. Um, I haven't been excited, like genuinely excited about shit in what seems like um, a way too long. But I'm super excited to have our first little pandy quarantine interview time via the internet. Thank you, internet. Uh, my dear friend, Amalia Nicholson is with us today. Um, and I would like you to follow along in your Instagram hymnal at Amalia Nicholson. Um, we are talking fashion, wardrobe, mental health, fucking plus size joy, and taking it to the internet. Um, she's a producer, she's a model, she's a creator, she's a wine enthusiast, she's a book reviewer with a tiny mic. She is the brain behind the hashtag you love during our pandemic of hashtag OOT distancing. Um, live from Los Angeles, Amalia Nicholson. <laughs> Hi. I guess this isn't live, is it? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's live to us because we're alive and we're in this moment. Oh, we are. Hi. Welcome Hi. to the show. Oh my it, god. It's so lovely good. to hear your voice. I have missed you a lot. I know. I've missed that voice. Yeah. And I I get to hear your voice because I listen to your podcast, which selfishly is the main reason I need it to continue forever so that I can just <laughs> hear you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I thank you for being on. Before we jump in today with the, you know, the what I can't take off this week and what our song of the week is, I wanted to acknowledge Amalia is a dear friend of mine, and we have witnessed great trauma in our city of Minneapolis since the murder of George Floyd. And I want to take a moment and, Amalia, honor your work on the front lines of the internet in sharing your information and resources and also acknowledge the state of the of the world that we are in. Um, I know that you are from South Minneapolis and have lived here your whole life um, but recently made a move to LA this past year for work and before we dive headfirst into our closet I wanted to to check in on your heart um, <laughs> and and, and see how you are. Yeah. Ooh, the heart, baby. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we had had this conversation, which I don't think we would have, because how could we? If we had had this conversation two, three weeks ago, I think we would have had a very different conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in Whittier, which is the neighborhood you saw get looted and whatever, you know, like whatever that term means, really. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see a Kmart get its windows busted in when you've been harassed by police outside of that Kmart before in your life. You don't seem, you don't feel personally too bad about it, if I'm being very honest about my yeah. experience. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it was a really bizarre, extremely weird, surreal time. Um, I joke that, like, you don't really expect the first year you've ever moved away from home to be the year a global pandemic and like a race war starts and it's not really a race war, but no, you know, sure. it's, it's, <laughs> it's like not what you expect yeah. uh, at all. And so it was devastating. And I think I'm not, I, I guess I didn't realize I was this kind of person, but I'm the, I, I guess it makes sense. I'm the kind of person who can't just sit back Mm -hmm. um, I had to do whatever I could with whatever I had and being in Los Angeles meant that I was, uh, glued to my phone and, um, 
doing whatever I could to share whatever I had. Uh, I, you know, that includes like, I'm fortunately, you, you know, I'm, I still have a job. And so that means donating money and, and asking others to donate money and um, sharing resources in other ways and hopefully making a difference, even the tiniest bit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully I did, but if not, that's okay too. I'm just really happy to see that everyone's sort of, uh, sort of on the other side of the really scary time. Um, and now I just want to make sure that everyone is, uh, strong enough to keep the work going because we're seeing, we're seeing people dip out. Um, and that's not going to work. For yeah. Us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I want to thank you for sharing that. Um, and I know that it is, it's so hard to be away from home in times of great trauma and what you have done in taking your resources and also sharing your experiences as a black woman on Instagram has been eye opening. Um, you know, when you're sharing your interactions, I was like, I, 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 I didn't know. Um, and, you know, it's a moment of, well, I should have known because this is our fucking world. But I also want to point people to your page because you have so many amazing resources up about, you know, black beauty brands and books that you should read. And I've learned so much from you and even you being across the country, um, you've been my, my, my go-to of even, you know, there's a food shelf and it's in my community, but Amalia has got it. (laughs) Reshare. (laughs) Um, And I, the, the internet in this way has been an amazing connector in this time. So I just, I wanted to thank you. Um, and I honor you and I love you. (laughs) I love you. And I think, you know, I'm glad you're, um, I'm glad it's helped you and I'm glad it's helped other people. And I I hope that anyone who's listening, who chooses to, uh, check me out on the internet knows, you know, I think one thing that I've been thinking a lot about is I've gotten, you know, a lot of new followers over the past three weeks and, Mm -hmm. They were, they were people who would have never followed me when I was talking about being plus size or what I was wearing or whatever. And that's, that's fine. I think it's an interesting thing to have people come to me now that they're being told they need to diversify their feed and amplify melanated voices and all of that. And I'm, I'm so happy to have um, new people who are interested in what I have to say. But um, it's, it's also weird, right? Because it's like, all I'm doing is sharing what I already have and what mm-hmm. I've already been doing. The books I read are the books I've already, the, the books that I'm sharing on Instagram are just books I've already owned. It's not because I'm trying to better anyone else. Mm-hmm. The, um, you know, the, the films I'm going to recommend or the, the stories about my life and my experience with police, with police brutality are stories I've already had. It's just, I, I'm open to sharing them if people are open to listening to them. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I think it as people, especially white people, um, choose to follow new accounts and diversify what they see, which I think is, is phenomenal and so important. I think we also have to remember that like the, the creators behind those Instagram accounts are just people. And so my experience as a black woman is, 1000% different from the experience of any other black woman. And same with that, you know, so yeah. follow a lot of black people, <laughs> you know, follow a lot of every kind of person because we are all different and we all have different perspectives. And like, I'm just sharing what feels authentic to me. Yeah. You know? And thank you so much for doing that. And I hope it is my greatest hope that these followers stick around for the plus size fashion. I don't know if you can hear, um, but Rosie the dog is at the door and she is very like, <laughs> yes, follow Amalia. She is whining, <laughs> scratching on the door, but they better fucking stick around um, <laughs> because your closet is one of my all-time favorites. And that leads me to 
what I can't take off this week. Do you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? I, ooh, the wind just opened my closet door. Oh, oh my God, you have a ghost. Oh my God. Oh no, it's, it's my boyfriend. He <laughs> needs to go away. <laughs> that was very scary. I'm in my closet, speaking of my closet, because it's quiet. And I thought the wind opened the door oh, and I got scared. <laughs> and then it just was a man. <laughs> it's a man I live with, but he was not invited. <laughs> the boyfriend, uh, <laughs> the dog. Uh, Why can't they just leave me alone? Get away from me. Similar circumstances. <laughs> Uh, it feels um, so good um, to giggle with you. <laughs> uh, uh, I can I can share what I can't take off. Yeah. Um. So at the beginning of Quarkor, 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 I everyone was like, "Oh my god, you need sweatpants!" And I was like, "Yeah, for sure." And I bought some sweatpants. But I live in LA, and like it gets hot here. Yeah. Uh, very quickly. And I decided that nightgowns are going to be my thing now. Yes. And I started looking on a website called the Vermont County Country Store. Yeah, the Vermont Country Store. Okay. And they sell like $80 nightgowns. And I was yes. like, mm, no, I, I can't. <laughs> um, but fun fact, H&M sells things that are supposed to be used as regular dresses. But I would never wear them outside of my home. They are wonderful nightgowns. So oh. I, yeah. So now I just look like a um, little ghost lady who's haunting the halls of my own home in these, like, very oversized, flowy gowns. Is it like um, a caftan like, moment? Sorry, go you ahead. No, you know, they're, they're sort of like spaghetti strap, tense dress, very flowy. Yes. Um, one of them is like an off the shoulder number with billowy sleeves and floral print. And my boyfriend thinks they look like a curtain, but I think I look like, um, a widow who is trying to haunt her home. I love them. They are the best thing about them is they're like from the straight size line. They're like all like an extra large or an extra extra large and they're gigantic and I love it. It's yes. fabulous. And I'm not like, I'm not an in-between, like I'm very much a plus size person. I like, yeah. I wear like a 22 to 24. Like these are, I highly recommend it. Keep your eye Straight out. Great size at H&M? Yeah, H&M. It's, it's wonderful. What so that's the what fuck? I <laughs> I'm, like, mm -hmm. I'm baffled. Listen, I will say this right now. I have said this since I very first began any sort of fashion blogging back in like 2010. If you don't go into straight size stores and try stuff on, you are doing yourself a disservice wow. because it's just, it's a free for all. Nothing makes any sense. I have, I'm looking at like a Reformation tank top. By the way, we're not talking about Reformation anymore, but like, whatever. I have this tank top from then it's a size large. And I'm like, okay, works for me. Like you have to try oh everything God. on. There are no rules. Yeah, I haven't gone in a <laughs> store and tried anything on for a long fucking time for the obvious reasons of, you know, they're usually not plus friendly. The last time, I feel like the last time I actually tried on something in store was with you. Um, you introduced <sighs> me to Big Bud Press. Mm -hmm. I'm so obsessed. Thank you so much. It's also another example of trying shit on in the store because sizing is so fucked up. So like <laughs> I am a 5X in their pants and I'm usually like a 20. And if I go to another store that will translate to a 3X. So yeah, I can't like, even wear their clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but you have, you have all that really cute tie-dye shit. Oh yeah, the the stretchy t-shirts do fit, but yeah, yeah the the like structured pants are like uh, a hard pass. But yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's, everything is made differently. It is what it is. Yeah, and some there's some stuff of theirs that I've gotten. So the the what I can't take off this week is basically my summer wardrobe. They're like a chartreuse pant, and they look like a they're like a canvas, I guess. And then there's like a 
an elastic to the back, um, which sounds <laughs> really fucking horrendous <laughs> um, and really ugly, but they're great. Um, and they're just like oversized and it's, it's hard to find an oversized fit in plus size, which is why I'm so shocked about this H and M straight size nightgown situation, which I'm going to do immediately after we record. Penny pack. Yeah. Um, but sometimes in big bud, there's like a different canvas material that has more structure and it's, Again, this goes back to like knowing your measurements and reading the fucking size charts on, on shit. But I've since shopped online with Big Bud and what I, they're size inclusive in terms that they carry everything from straight size up to like, I think 5X? 5X to They them. call it a 5X, but. Yeah. <laughs> 5X to them. Um, but I like yeah. how they have different models for different sizes. So I can shop their entire online experience through 5X, only looking at 5X models or looking at size four, you know? Yeah, I think that's like a very cool new trend with, I haven't seen it with a lot of brands. I feel like Good American does it and a couple yeah. others where they're like, and even they like, they'll show you a, it like clothes on a size two and a size 14, which is like not enough, but yeah. it's a want, smart move. I want like a big bellied model. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. I'm I love so those excited. Pants, by the way. <laughs> you know, I, I fucking love them. Um, and I got another pair and like a, like a rusty pumpkin um, that I just feel like, you know, they're one of those pants that I can cuff up and wear with a t-shirt or I can like put on a mule and wear it with a blazer. So it's a nice cross-functional piece, these pants with a good... I love, I, we need, I feel like all pieces need to be cross-functional. Yeah. yeah. Maybe not all, but a lot. <laughs> Um, I'm dying to know what your song of the week is. I feel like you will know what mine is. <laughs> I actually don't think I'll know what yours is. And I have to, I have to remember what it's called. Hold on. Oh no. Okay. So here's the deal guys. I am a very complex woman and I'm not going to find any. Well, maybe I will. I'm a very complicated woman. I have a lot of diverse tastes. I, you know, can listen to any, like, I, I've listened to every genre of music my entire life. I'm like, blah, 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 whatever. I'm very educated. But the song I can't stop listening to right now <laughs> is, it's called, like, the Yodel song, and it's on the Trolls 2 movie soundtrack. You're such <laughs> a good so aunt. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first of all, you I, are. Like, I have a niece and nephew, and so you'd think I watched Trolls because of that, but that is not true. Oh. The first time I watched Trolls. <laughs> Whoopsie. Uh, yeah, uh, the first time I watched the Trolls movie was with a friend uh, while drinking wine, and I love that movie so much that my nephew, who's like six and thinks he's like whatever about it now, he's like, if he sees me, he's like, you want to go watch Trolls, auntie? I'm like, thanks yeah. for doing me a solid kid. <laughs> like he thinks I can't watch it by myself. I and love so, it so much. <laughs> so when the new Trolls movie came out, uh, we FaceTimed with the kids and watched it and it was great. Um, but that song on the soundtrack is a banger. It's so good. And like Anderson Pack is all over the soundtrack. It's great. Oh, Highly shit. recommend. <laughs> wow. And it's but it's called just like Yodel Yodeling. Song? It's called like the yodel song and it's just like yodeling mixed with like du like dubstep chaos. Fuck it's like yeah. definitely for like children with too much energy who need to just like jump around. But wow. I like it a lot. <laughs> I haven't I haven't checked out Trolls 2 yet, but I know your love for Trolls runs deep um mm -hmm. especially regarding the Trolls Oreos with glitter. <laughs> You know, right? the glitter was a scam. Uh, I wondered. I wanted it to be better, but I... <laughs> True fan, I, though. You know, I'm, I'm, 
I'm happy with what I can get in the Trolls universe. <laughs> I fucking love it. Did you have Trolls as a kid? Uh, I'm sure I had like one or two, but they were, I think they're kind of creepy. Yeah. Like the dolls with the belly button. I think it's weird. Yeah. Uh, I never. I, I like the modern ones. Oh, oh, I mean, I'm sure they're making them again because there's a fucking Trolls movie. Um, I, I didn't even realize. <laughs> I am yeah, out of they're touch. very different. They're very different from the old school trolls. They look they incredibly clothes? different. Um, yeah, they wear clothes. There's That's no nice. gem in the belly. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're evolved. You know. <laughs> I only had a. Um, I never had an actual troll doll, but when I would go to the dentist, um, you know, I'm from a super small town and so when we'd go to the dentist we'd get a treat of mcdonald's afterwards and the only troll that i had was a happy meal troll and it's basically (laughs) just like you know a nude piece of plastic yeah i have uh (laughs) uh when things are really bad in minneapolis i have a neighbor who i also work with my friends she brought me um some uh things to help me relax which I won't name Mm. but he also brought me a happy meal with two trolls toys so I also have (laughs) I also have trolls from McDonald's (laughs) what a great friend we love her (laughs) um my song of the week is a song that I hold very near and dear to my heart when I think of you um, and our sweet friend, Emily. And that is um, the earth, the air, the fire, the water. Um, And I can't believe I looked it up on Spotify today. Um, The proper band, I don't know if we call them a band, uh, is Labana? Labana or Labana, yeah. It's like, it's just like, it's what you would expect to find um, in a coffee shop in Stockholm, Wisconsin, during a festival at midnight. Um, it's like, okay, so <laughs> I feel like when I really started getting to know you, it was right when Pen15 came out on Hulu. And yeah. yep. we... You, Emily, and I were planning a photo shoot together, and the end of our planning session just turned into us basically creating this almost like sans, it was like a sans-like atmosphere where we just sang that song over and over, like with our palms. We are adult women, by the way, (laughs) just sitting on a living room floor with our palms connected and eyes shut going... The earth, the air, the fire, the, the water, air, the return. fire, the water, return, return, return. <laughs> aye, 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 aye. <laughs> I think you also have to remember we after we also left Emily's apartment and went multiple places and just started singing it there, like in an art gallery. As you do, where other people were, the art was. We just moving. sang it. Yeah. <laughs> really emotional it's a great song it's a great song Uh, and I think I need to listen to it more yeah and I need to yodel more it's really great um I want to know yeah those are chaotic choices (laughs) well what's really great is they're gonna go we have like a progressive Spotify playlist (laughs) so these two are now gonna go back to back and I'm really excited about (laughs) that mood journey (laughs) that is gonna be very rough. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, tell me what has brought you joy this week. Oh, um, joy. Let's see. What's that? <laughs> um, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, oh God. I, you know what? I I took. I, I I'm on PTO right now. Hell yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Like, I just decided that, like, I'm going to do what my heart wants me to do. And, like, I have a stack of books I'm supposed to read. And, like, yeah, maybe I'll learn how to read through osmosis someday. But right now, I'm just watching Married at First Sight and 90 Day Fiance a lot. And it feels really good. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And maybe I'll take a shower today. We'll see. Maybe not. Turn the fuck out. (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah. But just, like, 
no pressure situations are what's what's going to bring me joy right now. I think. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, what brought me what about you? joy this week was, uh, you saw this on the internet and it was just really fucking awesome. And everything that I love about the internet and reminded me how the internet can be such a source of giggles. Um, mm. so there was a, uh, like an online auction going on for a homemade um, ACAB rug. Um, if you don't know what ACAB <laughs> means, it means all cops are bastards. Um, or does it? <laughs> or, right. That's, this is where this is going to go. Um, you know, and it's just like, I am a white woman. I had to Google what ACAB meant and i'm like okay yeah fuck yeah acab um and the comments were really lovely it basically went um you know this woman said all cops are not bad in a very you know like all lives matter moment um and then someone else commented don't worry that's not what it stands stands for and then the conversation continued to be like well what does it stand for then because you know that's what i've heard and 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 people need to be careful um and then everyone was just like <laughs> it means all cats are beautiful <laughs> <laughs> and the the final bid on this homemade rug where the you know the money was going to a, a local nonprofit. Um, was 475 bucks and the winning bid was just like, I fucking love cats. <laughs> it, was, it, was just like, it was so good. It was, it was like a roast of positivity and <laughs> I don't, I don't, it was so good. not a That's roast, but awesome. it was like so light, you know, we, we needed that little moment on the internet. I think we did. And you know what? It was like, it was like how to deal with trolls in the funny, the the bad kind of trolls, not the good kind. The it was like how to deal with them in the best way possible. Where yes. it's just like, it's like it was so funny. And the artist Crystal Quinn is just like unbelievably talented. And I highly recommend checking it out because it is okay. Chef Kiss funny. Yes. <laughs> I hope it lives on forever. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um. I want to now dive into your wardrobe. I feel good and warmed up and giggly and fucking thank you. Um, <laughs> you are such a true inspiration of mine um, and such a great example of celebrating our bodies through our wardrobe. Um, and I want to know kind of where your exploration and passion for fashion inside your body began? Mm, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, like, I've never not been this way. I think mm -hmm. it kind of goes back to what I was, like, it, it, I don't know, because it's just who I am, right? Like, I apparently growing up with someone who wanted to lay out the, my outfit for the next day. And then that transformed into, oh, I need my Delia's and Girlfriend's LA catalog so I can yes. figure out what I want to wear. Um, and then that turned into making sure my Sims looked really good all yes. the time. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, as soon as I was able to, you know, and then and my mom was always very thrifty and we would go to like discount stores and figure out what to wear and um, but you know, as your body changes and you get older and you're, you know, your plus size, you don't have the options as much. And, you know, I think I just, um, I didn't care. I don't know. I just would wear like band t-shirts and I had hot pink hair and like, would like, <laughs> I remember there are these really great pictures of me in like middle school with like jeans and I sewed like pink fabric into the sides. So my jeans were really big cause I couldn't afford, I couldn't fit into Jinko jeans they would just be skinny mm. jeans on me yeah. <laughs> so you know I figured out my own way to do it god that's um, fucking amazing <laughs> it's a look um so 
so it's just always been this way, I think. And um, as like the years have gone on, it's gotten easier to access uh, the types of clothes I, I authentically want to wear and like to wear mm-hmm. um, because they're being made. Um, but, I, you know, it's again, it's like it's the, the idea of celebrating my body it's like, or like a plus size body. It's like, I don't know. I just know I dress better than a lot of people who aren't fat. So like you should look at it, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Fucking this is over. That is it. You did it. <laughs> God, I mean, listen, fucking like a, a cherry on top, dude. Yes. <laughs> I've been like I, my friend Liz and I started a fashion Tumblr back in 2010 when that wasn't a thing, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm friends with like Gabby and Nicolette and like Kelly and like all these girls who've been doing this for so so long, mm-hmm. um, and and they're amazing and they're like total inspirations to me and and I don't want to do what they do because they're they are killing it like. Gabby is killing it. Gabby um, Fresh, for those who don't know Gabby oh yeah. on a first name <laughs> basis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. She is she is like the beacon celebrity of plus size fashion. All hail Gabby. She's, yeah. Yeah. She's the reason fat girls wear bikinis. She literally yes. was like, I, I'll I'll wear a bikini right now. And then it turned into like let's let 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 Gabby make her own line, and like yeah. that is the reason there are fat bikinis now. Um, so you know, I I did that for a little while, and so it's always been a part of me. It's not so much like it wasn't so much a goal of like what my internet presence was leading up to now necessarily. Um, that is until you know out for the distancing, I guess, but um. Yeah, I don't know. I just like taking pictures of what I wear. <laughs> I can love it. <laughs> how did um, how did OOT distancing start, and what does it mean? Yeah, uh, how did it start? I don't know, man. Um, I think this kind of goes back. Like, I am learning more about myself in that when faced with crippling anxiety and fear, uh, I don't let myself stop too much I sort of am like if I don't pay attention to how scared I am I won't be scared anymore so I stay Mm -hmm. really really busy and so like with all the stuff in Minneapolis and like wanting to spring into action once the pandemic kind of became a very real reality especially as someone in Los Angeles um, I was really freaked out I have really severe asthma and so Um, like leaving the house is not an option. Like really it's, it's like we are in lockdown and I don't really know when I'm not going to be in lockdown because people are crazy and think they deserve to go to brunch right now. Um, so like, I can't, I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Um, and so I was sort of like laying around and I was like, what is going to like inspire me and like what can I do and like how can I like put something positive out into the world because I was it was doom scrolling every day like it was just Mm -hmm. like everyone's just posting over and over like all these conspiracy theories or like here's why you need to wear a mask here's why you shouldn't wear a mask here's here's how many people are going to die by February 3rd or whatever and I'm like it's February 15th what are you talking about like (laughs) so (laughs) it's just like it's chaos yeah um and so I was like, okay, how do we find a way to encourage people to stay home? And like, how do we talk about distance, social distancing and not quarantine, but like kind of. And I was like texting with our friend Alex and I was like, what if we did like daily outfit challenges? And she was like, I just want to wear my athleisure. And I was like, respect. <laughs> and the next day I woke up and I was like, I'm just going to try it. And I yeah. texted like you and Emily And I was like, okay, we're going to try this thing if you want. And it's going to be called Outfit of the Distancing. And that comes from um, in the fashion blogger, Instagram-y community, there's a term, hashtag OOTD, which stands for Outfit of the Day. And so I was like, oh, that's easy. (laughs) Outfit of the Distancing. You just 
and instancing. I don't know how to say distancing without a D. So perfect. (laughs) You just add it to the D. (laughs) You just push them together. Um, You just push them together. What what OOT distancing um, did for me was, so I have always been a, a huge advocate of no one has a good day in sweatpants. Um, but when it was day in and day out of, and we were like, we were, uh, releasing a new, a brand new net new section of our website at this time. And so I was just like getting up straight to my desk and it was very much, I'm working in my pajamas, which are just underwear, sometimes the sweatpants, um, and then, you know, feeling off my game. And I'm like, why the fuck am I off my game? It's, oh, it's because I'm not wearing clothes. Um, and when you sent this this text, this email of this challenge, um, you had themes to it initially, right? Like, what are yeah, you, what thought, are you gonna you know, wear when you flatten the curve? <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah, that was the first one, yeah. Yeah, because um, it was like, I didn't want it to just be totally random. I didn't want, because you know what? I didn't want to see people wearing sweatpants. I was like, yeah. I want to give someone a challenge because I don't want to see that. Yeah, and it gave us a reason to get dressed. And in this, I learned something about myself. It was like, I I have always thought, you know, oh, I'm getting dressed for myself and <laughs> it's a form of self-expression. And then I'm just like, or do I get fucking dressed for the, internet what am I and I had like this moment of who am I when I'm not dressed up do you know what I mean Mm. yeah it was like this and then the second that I put on actual denim or put thought into what I was wearing it was like an immediate readiness yeah yeah it's um I, it's been interesting. Like when I first started it, I was so into it. I was so ready. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take another outfit photo. It's going to be great. And I felt all of that. And then I, I, I went through a really serious mental health crisis. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't remember exactly when it's been a few weeks since I've sort of come out the other side of it, but like, to be really frank and honest, like, I had to have like an emergency psychiatric call where I was like, I need antidepressants as soon as humanly possible because I can't keep doing this like this has been so hard I hate it I hate being stuck at home I hate being afraid of everyone I hate being afraid of getting sick I just I reached this point where I was like I don't like this I don't like this life of quarantine and I'm not happy and like my mental health was really suffering and the correlation of like I need to get back on my antidepressants which I had weaned myself off of like in January awesome yeah. timing um and then the like my ability to get dressed like di- are, is directly correlated right and so um it 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 is really obvious that like doing something as simple as putting on a piece of clothing that brings you joy, doing something as simple as putting on an outfit that brings you joy is a, is a sign of where you're at mentally, but also like what your desires are for yourself, I think. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of levels to what you just said, and I'm like on every fucking one of them. Um, uh, first off, I commend you on, um, the courage to reach back out and to, you know, know the signs for yourself, um, to getting that help. I, I have had to reach out again, um, to my therapist during this time. And it's, um, I'm glad that I have that option. I realized I'm very privileged to have that option. And in the other vein of that there were so many years where I neglected those signs in myself and like you said Mm -hmm. the the days where I can't get out of bed and I can't get dressed I would just be like this is an off day but you know like sometimes it would last three days and that's that's depression um 
it's a, a part of how depression manifests itself for me anyway. Um, well done on that. And I'm a big fan of drugs. I'm just, I'm yeah. like, to be very honest, I am yeah. just, wow. I just love my antidepressants. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, for me, it helps me. Um, it's like a little bit of a safety net. Um, so my, my antidepressants also help me curb my panic attacks. Mm-hmm. And Same. Yeah. So it, it's just like a little bit of, I'm in control because I took that pill today. Um, and it's there to help me. Um, I am not broken. Um, but I'm going to take this thing that helps me feel better. And, you know, it's all about mm-hmm. if it helps me feel better. And if I can fucking get dressed in a cool fucking outfit, then it's, you know, worth it to me. Right. Totally. I want to know your thoughts on, because OOT distancing, you know, when you started it, and this is one of the cool things about the internet is it took off without you sending um challenges every day or like every week Mm -hmm. um and now people are still using that hashtag of oot distancing and it's you know spread beyond uh just your friend group and it's a way that people are celebrating their wardrobe and still getting up and still showing up to their work from home or even just showing up to read a book on their couch, but kind of getting back into that, um, into the, the, the day to day and the, what's the word I'm looking for? The routine of the day. It's, it's taken off a bit. Um, what's been the coolest thing that you've seen unfold with it? Um, so I have two thoughts on that. I'll start with the, I'll start with the coolest and I don't actually know, but I think the coolest thing has been seeing people in other parts of the world using it. Mm. Um, I also think it's been really cool. I think something that happens a lot in plus size fashion, um, and plus size fashion blogging is that it's so sequestered from like quote unquote mainstream, and so for a hashtag to transcend that, it's really cool to me. Um, I see people plus and straight size using it, um, which I love. I think that's like, that's awesome. I think everyone who has a body on the internet deserves to show what they want to show um, and be celebrated for it. I don't care what it is or what you put in it, like you, what you wear, like, yeah. If you want to use that hashtag, it's yours. And I love that. And I also think what's cool about a hashtag, and like, you know, it's interesting. Some people kind of came to me about this, but um, I think what's cool about a hashtag is like, I don't need the credit. Like it's a hashtag. Those aren't created to have ownership. You're not supposed mm-hmm. to say hashtag outfit of the distancing by Amalia Nicholson. No, that's, <laughs> that's not what that's for. Like, this is just like organic. Yeah. And um And I don't need that credit. And I think that that's really cool that like it has surpassed anything I've done Um, because like, whatever, like no one's monetizing that. Like maybe if it was like some, somehow, you know, a brand was using it and making billions of dollars off of it, I'd be salty and maybe we'd have a different conversation, but like, this is about community building and about encouraging something good. So I think that's awesome. The weirdest thing though about it has been like creating something two months ago, three months ago now, um, that I don't want to see anymore. Uh, it's Mm. not that I don't like, I don't, I don't want to see an outfit photo right now. I don't want to see, um, right now is not the time for, for selfies to me in a lot of ways. Um, I, and, and I don't, I don't mean that in like a steadfast way. Like if someone wants to post an outfit photo right now, they're 1000% allowed to do that. And I, I, you know, I enjoy seeing people, um, but, you know, because I subscribe to the just like overall hashtag, I see people in my, you know, timeline and I see the people that are just, they're, they're acting as if their lives have gone on completely unchanged yeah. since the beginning of quarantine and since, you know, George Floyd's murder. And, um, and that's hard that I think 
the the the, pro, the difficult part of creating something that's um, so like equal to anybody who wants to use it is that you also have to accept that like people who aren't necessarily aligned with your political beliefs are allowed to use that thing too and, and that's okay mm. I mean there's I, I'm happy to see that it's still being used and people are still finding ways to feel good um I just hope it also means that they're distancing at the bare minimum and if not trying to dismantle uh the systems that oppress us <laughs> would also be nice well <laughs> ma'am <laughs> I am here for you well done um <laughs> I didn't even think about the way that it would come into your feed as does it come into your feed more regularly because you started it is no, there like a weird no, algorithm thing I don't think Instagram cares who started it mm -hmm. which is fine <laughs> yeah I don't I don't see it too often I, I follow enough people that I don't I don't see that hashtag all that often so I actually haven't checked on it in a while because it just hasn't felt like the right time yeah. um it feels like it's the right time for outfit of the revolution maybe you know <laughs> ma'am she's doing it you are great <laughs> at starting revolutions Amalia yeah and you know what the best part is the outfit of the revolution is a nightgown from H&M <laughs> wow wow from <laughs> From homemade Jinko flares to H and M nightgowns of the revolution. Exactly. Um, exactly. I am proud of you, and I love you, and I think that you are smart and hilarious, and I want the whole world to follow you because you're your brilliance and your brain is like, I'm so lucky to get to know it in person, but also like your Instagram is pretty fucking good too. Um, no. <laughs> God, I just feel like I'm an idiot on the internet. So that's nice to hear, but like really only follow if you're prepared for me to talk about trolls. Cause like, honestly, that's where we're headed once this is all done. <laughs> but like also- And maybe okay. King of the Hill. <laughs> I fucking love you so much. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming on. Um, you are a dear, dear love, and the world is so lucky to have you. I'm lucky to have you in my world. So thank you for inviting me to be here. And if you got this far in the pod, I'm impressed as fuck and really grateful to have you listening. Uh, if you want to know more information about me or the show, check out the show page on matriarchdm.com where we host all of the What I Can't Take Off, our progressive Spotify playlist from the songs of the week, and uh, obviously the reminder of who to follow for the week, all in a nice little fucking matriarch digital media bow. Theme song is Molly May by Ben Karen. I'll, I'll never get over saying that. It's so good, right? Uh, thanks for listening. You're so cute. <laughs>